Patriots, rebels, outlaws, and pirates, the First Amendment to the Constitution entitles us to free speech, particularly political speech. Now, if there's one thing the Trump administration revealed is that there's a lot of people out there who have no tolerance whatsoever for opinions which diverge from their own. The insidious cancer of political correctness has infected every area of our country and our lives, and the rise of social media has made it terminally virulent. Differences of opinion or political support are no longer tolerated among the tyrannical political class, their accomplices in the media, and their sycophant followers throughout society. Now, we have lived with corporate boycotts for a long time, but now the boycotting applies to the individual. It has become known as the cancel culture. An individual, sometimes famous, but often just a normal person, expresses an opinion that offends someone somehow, and they find themselves shamed. But it's more than that. Pressure is put on employers to fire them. Any organizational professional memberships, they're attempted to be revoked. The point is to destroy that person's life, make them unemployable, and isolate them from friends and family until they genuflect before the bullies and acknowledge their sin of holding an incorrect opinion or worldview. Now this was once primarily about global warming and then it came sexual orientation. For the last four years, Trump has become the personification of everything the politically correct elites hated. They attached to him everything they believe is wrong with society and people. He, and even more importantly, his followers and supporters, are backward Neanderthals who oppose everything they believe characterizes a proper modern leftist society. With this focus and the fact that he was president, the cancel culture and the war on divergent political speech escalated by several factors. The intimidation now became very personal, face to face. Politicians, most famously Senator Maxine Waters, told their supporters to go and seek out their political opponents. And when they were out and about just at a store or a restaurant, and get in their faces and yell and make them very, very uncomfortable. This mode of intimidation spread to any supporters of President Trump and those who refused to actively support organizations like Black Lives Matter. Who can forget the images of BLM thugs shouting at people in restaurants who wouldn't raise their fists in support and refusing to let seniors with walkers cross the street? These methods have gotten more sophisticated and boldly crossed the line into obvious illegality. The violence that too often accompanied the intimidation is one example. Doxing is another. The doxing is the illegal activity of revealing documents and other personal information about someone with the intent to threaten, harass, intimidate, shame, humiliate, or place them at risk. Who is going to stick their neck out when they could end up with BLM and Antifa brown shirts showing up on their front lawn? How many are willing to risk their livelihood to express a political or social opinion that may offend? But you know, this is all our fault. We are the ones bowing to this pressure. We are the ones genuflecting before these people. We need to have courage to stand up to these bullies as individuals and businesses. If we don't respect one another's right to speak, and if we allow ourselves to be intimidated, we won't need the government to explicitly take away this right. We will have already given it up. We are rapidly heading in the direction of Europe and other Western nations where restrictions on free speech are onerous and getting worse. Here are some examples. Britain prohibits any abusive or insulting words meant to stir up racial hatred. Canada outlaws any writing, sign, or visible expression that incites hatred against any identifiable group. These laws ban speech based not only on its content, but on the reaction of other people. Supposed blasphemy against Islam will subject people to legal penalties in a lot of Western countries. In Paris, a man was prosecuted for getting into a cursing match in a bar in which he used sexist and anti-Semitic slurs. A comedian in Canada was charged for violating the human rights of a lesbian couple with whom he got into a trash-talking session with a group of women during open mic night. In Australia, who can forget seeing this on the internet? A woman was arrested and drug out of her home in front of her children for attempting to plan an anti-lockdown protest. It should come as no surprise to learn that these laws have had a chilling effect on people's feelings about expressing themselves. 
A recent poll in Germany found that only 18% of Germans feel free to express their views in public. Over 31% of Germans did not even feel free expressing themselves in private among friends. Just 17% felt free to express themselves on the internet, and 35% said that the freedom to speak is confined to the smallest of private circles. Their fears may be well-founded if Norway's recent action catches on. Norway has criminalized anything that be, could be construed as hate speech against transgender people or ideas. For public comments, you could be jailed for three years. But even more chilling is the fact that you can be jailed for a year for private comments. So among your friends or in your own home, you could be jailed for your opinion. Do you think your home would be safe? Are you sure your children have not been indoctrinated to the point where they would turn you in? Are you sure that your friends aren't going to snitch? Turning us against one another is what the status want. But also consider this. Alexa and Siri and Google, they're always listening. You don't think there's some algorithm in the NSA bunker that would sort all that out? Free speech is a fundamental right that is required in a free society. We need to push back against those who would bully us into silence. We need to bury political correctness and rebel against the government that spies and regulates this most precious right.